Hello. It is a pleasure to be in the midst of you all today and look forward to sharing um, my thoughts and some of uh, Frederick Douglass's words on what to the slave is the 4th of July. As we get ready to approach um, another um, Independence Day, it's always important that we think about what this message means for not just America, but particularly African Americans um, today, past, and in the future. My name is Dr. Grace D. Gibson, an assistant professor at Virginia Commonwealth University in the Department of African American Studies. And uh, let's just go ahead and, and get it started and begin. Let me set the scene for you. July 5th, 1852, Corinthian Hall, Rochester, New York. Douglas has moved, just moved to Rochester in 1847 when he had become publisher of the weekly abolitionist paper, The North Star. In the audience of about 600 people who paid about, at this time, 12 and a half cents for entry, Frederick Douglass delivered the keynote address for an Independence Day celebration organized by the Rochester Ladies Anti-Slavery Society, where he was invited to come and talk about what the 4th of July means for Americans' Black population. And in true fashion, Douglas makes sense, makes sure to address this thought while posing the following question back to the audience. What to the slave is the 4th of July? As noted by historian David Blight, the speech was originally delivered at a moment when the country was fiercely locked in debate over the question of slavery. But there is a reason why it has remained famous more than 150 plus years after emancipation. Part of this reason for its lasting legacy starts with the fact that not long after giving this speech, a week later to be exact, Douglas would convert the speech into a pamphlet that became available for sale. Now in today, 2021, it is read, readily available in paper and digital form. You can check it out on YouTube. You can watch various interpretations of, um, of Douglas's speech. So at this point now, no need to have to be in Corinthian Hall. You can be right there in your own home in the comfort of your couch and view his speech. Now keep in mind, before the tweets, Instagram posts, the Tumblr threads, or even a virtual presentation such as this, uh, giving a long form oratory was considered high art. And on top of that, during the time, that time Independence Day was considered the ultimate form for a speech. However, just imagine this free black man was given free reign to speak on his thoughts to an all white audience during this 4th of July celebration. I can only imagine what the audience, this all white audience was even thinking and expecting. So in these moments to follow, I just want to share a few significant moments from his speech that are worth highlighting. And we begin. The papers and placards say that I am to deliver a 4th of July oration. This certainly sounds large and out of the common way, for it is true that I have often had the privilege to speak in this beautiful hall and to address many who now honor me with their presence, but neither their familiar faces nor their perfect gauge, I think I have of Corinthian Hall, seems to free me from embarrassment. The fact is, ladies and gentlemen, the distance between this platform and the slave plantation from which I escaped is considerable. And the difficulties to be overcome in getting from the latter to the former are by no means slight. That I am here today is to me a matter of astonishment as well as of gratitude. You will not therefore be surprised if in what I have to say, I evince no elaborate press preparation nor grace my speech with, um, with any high sounding exordium. With little experience and with less learning, I have been able to throw my thoughts hastily and imperfectly together. 
and trusting to your patient and generous indulgence, I will proceed to lay them before you. Now, some rhetoric scholars such as Robert L. Heath and Damian Waymer uh, discuss that Douglas's speech can be read as this quote, a paradox of the positive due to the fact that it highlights how something positive and meant to be positive in this case, the Declaration of Independence can also exclude individuals. So let's go back and see what else that Douglas has to say. Uh, but before that, let me actually add this. In this moment, knowing that the audience is familiar with the subject matter regarding 4th of July speeches, he bypasses having to explain its significance. Douglas is also doing a balancing act of acknowledging his limited experiences. But also note that he has spoken before several times in Corinthian Hall to similar audiences. On one hand, he is putting on display a display of humility, while at the same time establishing his authority as a speaker and justifying his presence on the platform. He also reminds them that he was once a slave and calling attention to the fact that a slave has been invited to speak on freedom. This is a strategic method in which he employs irony. It is a strategy that he will use throughout the speech up to uh, emphasize certain things. I like to think of this opening as a setup for his audiences as Douglas is preparing his listeners for a serious display of learning and a rhetorical skill, a feat quite beyond the capacities of an inferior being. Back to Douglas's words. This for the purpose of this celebration is the 4th of July. It is the birthday of your national independence and of your political freedom. This to you is what the Passover was to the emancipated people of God. It carries your minds back to the day and to the act of your great deliverance and to the signs and to the wonders associated with that act and that day. This celebration also marks the beginning of another year of your national life and reminds you that the Republic of America is now 76 years old. I'm glad fellow citizens that your nation is so young. 76 years though a good old age for a man is but a mere speck in the life of a nation. Three score years and 10 is the allotted time for individual men but nations number their years by two thousands. So let's take note of the repetition of the words your and you. Here we see a startling emphasis on the distance between Douglas and his audience and signals to his listeners that he does not share their perspective or their attitudes toward the 4th of July. Yet in steel, he takes hope from the fact that this country is young, only 76 years old. Its destiny and character are not fixed. Thus it may yet change and abandon slavery. We can only hope for this. And back to Douglas. Pride and patriotism, not less than gratitude, prompt you to celebrate and to hold in a perpetual remembrance. I have said that the Declaration of Independence is the ring bolt to the chain of your nation's destiny. So indeed, I regard it. The principles contained in that instrument are saving principles. Stand by those principles. Be true to them on all occasions, in all places, against all foes and at whatever cost. Fellow citizens, pardon me, allow me to ask, why am I called upon to speak here today? What have I or those I represent to do with your national independence? Are the great principles of political freedom and of natural justice embodied in, the, in that Declaration of Independence extended to us? And am I therefore called upon to bring our humble offering to the national altar and to confess the benefits and express devout gratitude for the blessings resulting from your independence to us? Here in these passages is pretty quite self-explanatory as Douglas is making it very clear that this holiday is not inclusive of him or any other African-American for that matter. Their inheritance of justice, liberty, prosperity and independence has not been afforded to us. He further goes on to say, 
what to the American slave is your 4th of July? I answer, a day that reveals to him more than all other days in the year, the gross injustice and cruelty to which he is the constant victim. To him, your celebration is a sham. Your boasted liberty, an unholy license, your national greatness, swelling vanity, your sounds of rejoicing are empty and heartless. Your denunciation of tyrants, brass fronted imprudence, your shouts of liberty and equality, hollow mockery. Your prayers and hymns, your sermons and thanksgivings with all your religious parade and solemnity are to him mere bombast, fraud, deception, impiety and hypocrisy. A thin veil to cover up crimes which would disgrace a nation of savages. There is not a nation on the earth guilty of practices more shocking and bloody than are the people of these United States at this very hour. Fellow citizens, I will not enlarge further on your national inconsistency. The existence of slavery in this country brands your republicanism as a sham, your humanity as a brace, base pretense and your Christianity as a lie. It destroys your moral power abroad. It corrupts your politicians at home. It saps the foundation of religion. It makes your name a hissing and a byword to a mocking earth. It is the antagonistic force in your government, the only thing that seriously disturbs and endangers your union. It fetters your progress. It is the enemy of improvement, the deadly foe of education. It fosters pride, it breeds insolence, it promotes violence, it shelters crime. It is a curse to the earth that supports it. And yet you cling to it as if it were the sheet anchor of all your hopes. Oh, be warned, be warned. A horrible reptile is coiled up in your nation's bosom. The venomous creature is nursing at the tender breast of your youthful Republic for the love of God, tear away and fling from you the hideous monster and let the weight of 20 millions crush and destroy it forever. Here is an apex moment, a moment to really put out the shame that Douglas is presenting here. Douglas is also pointing out the inevitable of the civil war that is approaching and will be approaching. And early on, Douglas notes that he was once enslaved and this same tone is brought up again as he is reiterating this speech on the 4th of July is not coming from a Northern white perspective, but one of someone who has been enslaved. The scathing passage is where we see Douglas highlighting the wrongfulness and ugliness of slavery. Douglas is not telling them what they want to hear, but what they need to hear. He continues to note, but such is not the state of the case. I said with a sad sense of the disparity between us, I am not included within the pale of glorious anniversary. Your high independence only reveals the immeasurable distance between us. The blessings in which you this day rejoice and are not enjoined, enjoyed in common. The rich inheritance of justice, liberty, prosperity and independence bequeathed by your fathers is shared by you, not by me. The sunlight that brought light and healing to you has brought stripes and death to me. This 4th of July is yours, not mine. You may rejoice, I must mourn. Now, although in these just few snapshots from Douglas's provocative and eloquent speech, just mentioning this speech is enough of a reminder of where America was then and what it would ultimately become. What should also be interesting to note is the fact that Douglas chose to deliver this speech on July 5th versus on Independence Day. This decision to give the speech the day after was definitely an act of resistance and defiance. Continuing in the same vein when on this day in 1827, 
4,000 African Americans paraded down Broadway in New York to celebrate the end of slavery in New York. And also the fact that celebrating the fourth Independence Day while millions of Black Americans were enslaved was for Douglas considered the height of hypocrisy. Douglas' speech is, is seen as a foreshadowing of a reckoning and of what definitely was definitely on the horizon. Now, 169 years later, Douglas' speech probably resonates and continues to resonate even more with African Americans. His speech professionally is an opportunity to have a dialogue with my students about the legacy and the impact of the 4th of July and this idea of what is really patriotism and who gets to be a patriot. Personally, Douglas's speech is a great reminder that this holiday, as he said, is not mine, and I am perfectly fine with that. It is a day to fellowship with family and friends, get some good barbecue, and also a day of rest. And it was never about being patriotic, at least for me. It was more so just about the participation of engaging in the act of being with family and friends, that is 4th of July. In my mind, it was a day off of work, a day to sleep in, time to simply just have fun. A small part of me knew that the core of the 4th of July holiday was not for me as a black person. I was not celebrating the holiday in the same way or spirit as white Americans. Even in the midst of limited K through 12 curriculums, I knew that the Declaration of Independence was signed on July 4th, 1776. And that Emancipation Proclamation was issued on January 1st, 1863. Which means there was a 87, and some change gap before Black people could take part in this alleged freedom and independence. But also let's be clear, regardless of whether it's July 4th or July 5th or any other day, Black Americans will forever be reminded of the complicated past and disjointed relationship to this country. If we consider the current social political and economic climate, especially for us African Americans, Douglas's speech speaks volumes on the way America interprets freedom. Everything is provisional and not guaranteed. It was and is an appreciated effort, but this is just the beginning. It's pretty clear that historically, America rarely has Black Americans back, at least not in the way needed. For example, Denmark Vesey, Nat Turner, Sojourner Truth, Breonna Taylor, Trayvon Martin, Sandra Bland, George Floyd, Dominique Fells, Michelle Cusseau, Eric Garner, Corin Gaines, Tamir Rice, Brayla Stone, and many, many, many more. But Black people will always still continue to persevere even when the cards are continuously stacked against us. Also with Douglas's speech, he wanted to provide another picture, a viewpoint about the strength, skills, and brilliance of African-Americans. Something that many, um, that many amplify and highlight today in 2021. However, if the antiquated mindset of white Americans who believe that African Americans were or are inferior, indeed less than fully human, does not change, then we as Black people will consistently and constantly face a steep uphill, uphill battle. However, what can be done is to continue to dismantle these notions, educate ourselves, listen to the joy, the anger, the cries, be consistent in your pursuit against systemic anti-Black violence and for social, racial, social and racial justice. While I admire the corporation statements that are supporting Black Lives Matter, Juneteenth, and, so, and, and several other holidays that are um, attached to African Americans, I hope, much like Douglas Hope, that these are not meant to pacify, be a pacifier for the moment and know that dispelling these notions and taking part in these actions is a daily task 
something Douglas sought to do on that Monday morning in 1852 and every day before and after. My hope is that a speech like Douglas's becomes just as familiar as the Declaration of Independence that he critiqued and that it also becomes in the same uh, catalog with other noteworthy speeches that I would include with teaching, such as Ain't I a Woman from Sojourner Truth, Why Sit Ye Here and Die from Mariah Stewart, The Ballad of the Bullet from Malcolm X, Fannie Lou Hamer's speech at the 1964 DNC, among numerous others. And even with Douglas pointing out how America was built on inconsistencies and hypocrisy, we still have to remind America that black people are human, that we are worthy of respect and that our lives matter. As noted by Ella Baker, quote, until the killing of black men, black mothers, sons, and I would include black women and daughters, becomes as important to the rest of the country as the killing of white mothers, sons or daughter, we who believe in freedom cannot rest until this happens, end quote. Ultimately, it is what we do with this knowledge from Douglas and many others that we gain past, present, and future that will really truly make the difference. Whether you've heard Douglas's speech many times before today, or if you are a newcomer, the message will always remain the same the inevitable arrival of freedom, whatever the peril or the cost. So on this day in 2021, I revise the question and say again that Douglas posed and instead with a sigh asked, what to the black American is the 4th of July when freedom is conditional, tentative and always subject to change? But know this, as I leave with you these last words, no, our Black lives matter, our freedom matters, our futures matter. Be safe, be healthy, and never give up. Thank you. <laughs>